Welcome to Zen and the Art of Homeschooling. I'm Ollie Malley, and this is... Meshach Malley. And Meshach Malley is our son. This is our second interview with him. Today we're going to talk about homeschooling through middle school and high school. And Meshach's going to share some of his experiences with that, some advice, some thoughts. So I want you to think about, uh, think back about, you know, your middle and high school years. Middle and high school years. Well, we, we had some things that we knew you had to take. Yes. And so we want you to get in college, and there's a list of classes that you're going to have to get. Mm -hmm. So we kind of went through those when you were in middle school. We did. Trying to figure out how we would meet all those requirements right. for your classes. And so some of those, we had textbooks mm -hmm. that you worked through. Yeah. Some of those, um, we did some of the classes online. You started taking some classes at the community college. Yes. Um, and then and then some of those things, you were just choosing things you were interested in. Absolutely. And then making some of those choices for what you were interested in, what you wanted to do. And yes. so, um, so all those things together, kind of, that's how we put together your middle and high school curriculum. Yes. And I was very self-propelled, I think, mm -hmm. in a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of, there weren't a lot of deadlines. There wasn't a lot of stuff that needed to be done at a certain point. But I was able to motivate myself to some extent to really, to really get through um, this loose curriculum we had sort mm -hmm. of designed um at my own pace which was sometimes faster and sometimes slower and sometimes there were other things mixed in or some things were an amalgamation of a couple different courses so um but we were able to we had a little bit of play in terms of what we were able to do and then I was I had to just find my own pace and rhythm within that right and I, it didn't it didn't happen all at once no I think no. there was time in middle school between between sixth and eighth grade where it started kicking in for you more. Yes. And you started making schedules for yourself that yes. you were going to get up at a certain time and get work done by a certain time. Yes. I, I've always been a morning person. And so I sort of just pushed that to the extreme. And so I said I would get up at 6 a.m. and I would work till noon. Um, and I would get everything done. And I had a very rigorous schedule that I would get through mm -hmm. um, on a given day, which was really, that worked really well for me. And I know, I know homeschool kids that they're much better in the evening and they work, they work from 5 PM till 2 AM. And that's, that's their time that they're, you know, really focused and productive. And so I think it's really a matter of figuring out what is that space that works for you when you can really, really just delve into whatever it is that you need to be doing. Um, and I think that that's carried on pretty strongly in terms of my transition into college. Because you, you suddenly, you step out of this space, this high school space, where people are telling you what to do um, for most kids. And they're, they're, they, they have these hard deadlines. And they have to, they have to study at a certain time because they're in class at a certain time. And then you had a point where you're in college and maybe you have one class a day, maybe two classes a day. You, you sort of have a lot of freedom in terms of when you can get up and when you can go to bed. And there's not, there, there, are, there are hard deadlines, but there's nobody really keeping up with you, you know, before that deadline. And so sort of having that skill set of being able to map out what it was that I needed to do and understanding when the times were that I was stronger as a student um, and being able to take advantage of that has been really, really beneficial in terms of my transition from the homeschooled high school to university. Mm -hmm. So there might be some opportunities for your child right now to to do some of that learning, yeah. some of that um, individual learning and figuring out how they best work. And are they a morning person? Are they an evening person? Um, yeah, if somebody's not standing on top of them, how are they going to get their work done? Because that's going to happen in college. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 The other thing, I was, you know, you you were given, like we said earlier, you're giving your brother some really good advice. I was. So, I mean, I, I'd like you to give, like, he's just at that point, right? In, he's seventh grade right mm -hmm. now, middle of, or he's going towards the end of seventh grade, where he is starting to transition into being more self propelled right. from being less self-propelled in sixth grade mm -hmm. and before. And what is, what's some advice you were giving him? I was giving him advice. So I, I think there are so many resources online and now more than ever we're seeing um, as universities start switching to online education. Um, it's sort of highlighting this ability for people to study themselves sort of independently. And there, there are so many resources available. Some of my favorites, um, any public library in the U.S. has a, in their, if you go to the research section, 
there's a there's a website called Canopy that you can sign up for for free, and it's a curated version. It's a it's a curated streaming service of movies and um, especially foreign films. But then they have lectures, um, and there's a there's a wonderful series called The Great Courses mm -hmm. um, that produced these beautiful lectures shot in studio with college professors going over a massive array of, of topics, anything from, from history to math to science to culinary schools uh, to anything else you can imagine, music theory, uh, emotional intelligence. And it, it sort of runs the gambit in terms of the resources that are available there. I know my brother is doing Tai Chi right now. He is, yeah. Um, just watching watching these these free lectures online that anyone can access. Um, and there, there are so many other resources like that available on the internet. I'm a big fan of the Crash Course series. Uh -huh. um, on YouTube, there are these short 10 to 15 minute videos organized by course. Mm -hmm. um, and they're informative, and they're densely packed, and they're <laughs> highly interesting. They have a wonderful animation firm that works with them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there are these huge animated portions of the videos. It's not just a talking head, um, and there there are just there's so much so much like that that you can just start if you start exploring those websites and just peeking around, you'll find all of these these free courses that you can just start to delve into. Right. right. Um, yeah, yeah. Your brother, your brother's doing um, philosophy yes. right now. With it was a crash course, right? With, the crash it's course philosophy. philosophy, and it is so fun to have a thirteen-year-old because you've done philosophy now in college, I have, and yes. of course, uh, uh, your dad's taking philosophy. Mm -hmm. I've taken philosophy, and so we're having these great dinner conversations with uh, Finian with this thirteen-year-old knowledge of philosophy from crash course. Right, and um, it's just very uh, fun. It is fun, yes, and it's it's sort of it reinvigorates this love of learning and this, and it's it's so accessible and it, and I, I we're we're limiting this to, to high school, but it's it's so accessible for anyone mm -hmm. at any age. I've found myself, you know, through these times being bored in the evenings and watching Crash Course U.S. History just to brush up on it, just because they're they are they're fun and interesting and informative videos. Um, and if you're not in the classroom setting and if you're not, you know, stimulated by those intellectual conversations, it's really nice to sort of have this supplement of, you know, sort of this this intellectual conversation that's going on, even if you're not directly part of it. So one of the other things you did in high school, mm -hmm. yeah, in middle school, high school, you did, you listened to books. I did listen to books. Listen to books online. Mm -hmm. And... And I was okay with it. You, you were in a literature class mm -hmm. with me and your dad, a teaching literature class with a group of kids. And so we assigned books. But then you also went off on your own and read some books, but also listened to books. Okay. Yes. I, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I struggle sometimes with, old, especially older books, to read a lot. I find myself mm -hmm. waking up two hours later with a book in my lap. <laughs> um but when I was like 14, 15 years old, I listened to the 64 hours of Les Miserables, um, a beautiful translation and narration by, um, I think it was Penguin. And it was, I was able to consume the material in a way that was accessible to me at that age. Um, and even now I've been revisiting it since we've been back. I got an Audible um, subscription and I've been listening to Don Quixote, the beautiful Spanish novel from 1604 right. um but it's and and so and even when we were doing the literature class I was able to consume literature in a way that worked for me mm -hmm. um in the same way we were talking about earlier about you know adjusting things to your time there's there's a certain you have to sort of figure out what is the best way for me to consume this material and I think often I'm able to draw a lot more out of an audiobook than I am from reading a book on a page. And so taking advantage of resources like that, um, which are ava available in abundance, even if you don't want to pay for Audible or something, um, there's a wonderful series called LibriVox that does uh, publicly sourced audiobook reading. So you'll get these books that are just, just, someone, just someone reads it aloud um, and records it and puts it up 
and you can access them from the podcast app on your iPhone. And so it's there's sort of this this rich, this great rich abundance of literature that's just sort of right there. You don't even need to have a book. Right. Right. And I remember the, like those 64 hours that you're listening to Les Mis. Mm -hmm. um, part of that time, or most of the time, you were doing something else, too. I was, and yes. And doing art, or mostly making sets and other things for movies, I yes. assume, but yes. that's what you were doing. But you don't have to just be listening. No, and that's the great thing, too, is that you can, you can sort of multitask, and so you, you don't find yourself falling asleep <laughs> as much. Or you don't find yourself being bored and turning it off. But if you have to clean your room, or you're working on an art project, you're drawing, you're painting, even if you're just organizing. Um, it's sort of lovely to have that that background kind of noise. That and then it and then it feels more productive in total. Yeah. One of the last things I want to talk about that I've really enjoyed these last few weeks is is music practice. So yes. your brother has been uh, he had been teaching himself how to play ukulele, mm -hmm. and then he switched. We watched a movie, <laughs> and a movie that you recommended about the Beatles um, yesterday. Yesterday. Wonderful yesterday. film. Wonderful film. And he was just inspired to take up the guitar again, which mm -hmm. he had taken some lessons with other people, and put it down, and he's been practicing for hours and hours, which has been fun to watch. Yes. And then... You've, I've heard you going back to the piano sound, yes. which has been fun. You took years of piano lessons. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't touched a piano in four or five years. And mm -hmm. yeah, what a better time to sit down and, you know, practice a musical instrument than now. Right. <laughs> Just, and it's so lovely in the house uh, to have that music going. Yes. It's been really wonderful. Well, thank you for talking about Absolutely. middle and high school. Yes. And We'll probably invite you back again. For sure. There's lots, there's lots that we can so talk about. So much to talk about. Yeah. It was, it was certainly fun homeschooling you. Mm -hmm. And we say Mishik was our guinea pig. He I felt, was, he, yes. <laughs> he feels that a little bit, <laughs> somewhat. But I think it all turned out all right. I think it did. I think yes. it turned out just fine. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you another day.